Alright guys, so I thought we'd do a little uh, tour of my studio and show you all, this, all the gear that I use, um, all the gear that I've acquired over the years of making beats and uh, going through just various items. Uh, you know, I started out on a cheap, crappy computer uh, running a cracked version of FL Studio and uh, now this is what I have. I'm real proud of it. So I'm just going to take you through item by item and uh, let you know what I, what I do with it, what I think of it, and yeah, that's all. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, my computer. It's uh, 2022 uh, Mac Studio, the base model, so that's uh, 512 gigabytes of storage. Uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM with the uh, M1 Max chip and so far this thing has been a beast. Um, I've had no issues you know I use Ableton, Ableton's my DAW of choice I've had no issues uh, as far as loading audio tracks and multiple plugins and it's just been like processing everything no problem so the next thing I want to talk about is actually the newest addition to my studio. This is the Akai MPC-X and man this thing has blown my mind. Now I have, uh, I've had the, live, the MPC Live 2, um, I had the Akai Force for a while, which I actually uh, sold. I had the SP404 Mark II, but this piece is by far the coolest piece of gear that I own. I call it the mothership because it it's got buttons for days and you know coming from coming from the live 2 these buttons and, and the Q links and the size of the screen it's just been amazing. So yeah all that to say that I absolutely love this machine and I highly recommend it and uh, in case you guys are wondering, the wooden side panels on this MPC are from mpcstuff.com. And I believe they're made out of walnut. I'll see if I can get a better shot of that. Here's just a, a side angle of the, the uh, side panels on the MPC-X. Alright, so next up, this is my uh, audio interface. It's the Universal Audio Apollo Solo and it's for, obviously it's for the Mac and um, this thing sounds amazing so before I ever got this interface I was using the Yamaha MG10XU which was cool because it had the you know the built-in effects um, but the preamps on it I think were pretty bad I mean the when I, when I plug a mic into this and compare it to the Yamaha, it's just night and day. Like, this is way clearer. So, I highly recommend it. You know, I only need, you know, the solo. I don't need more inputs than that. So, but this is my MPC Live 2 Retro Edition. And yeah, I'm a big fan of deck savers. You know, you spend so much money on this gear, uh, you better keep it safe and protected. So, yeah, this is the Live 2. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Uh, what I did was I changed out the volume knob for this DJ Tech Tools uh, fatty knob, which I like because they're grippy. I really wasn't a fan of the volume knob that came with this. It was just the way it was sloped and it was slippery and this just feels better and it matches the, the red and white buttons. So I like it. Um, these knobs, I think I got them from Amazon really cheap aluminum just uh, billet knobs and just feels better they have this textured grip on the side and when it comes to changing effects or editing your your sample points it just feels better to me and I like you know I, I spray painted them gray so I just like how it looks it looks clean it looks better all right right above my MPC Live 2 this is my turntable this is what I do most of my sampling off of. Um, nothing fancy, it's a Techniques uh, SLQ200. It is direct drive, but it's, it's not good for scratching or anything. Um, 
I actually got this for free. Uh, I saw a listing online. The guy said it's free. Uh, it's on the side of the road. It's free. Pick it up. So the day that I picked it up, it was actually a rainy day. And sure enough, this is on the side of the curb. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, see if I could get it to work. So I brought it home, dried it out. Uh, I think there was a leaf inside, and so when this was spinning, it was making a scraping sound. So I just removed that, and I mean, it's nice. It spins and works great for me. It was free. Next thing I just want to show real quick, uh, my main headphones. They are the, the uh, Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. These are the closed back, and I mean, I love them. They're very comfortable. They sound great. You know, it's got this cushion on the headrest part, and these are nice and soft, and um, they're just super comfortable for when I'm making beats for, you know, longer periods of time. Um, next thing, you know, a lot of people probably don't talk about the mouse that they use, but I mean, this thing is great. Just the grips on it, it's the Logitech MX Master 3S. And uh, it's been pretty good. I've had some issues with, with the Mac where, you know, there was a, a period of time where the cursor was really laggy and uh, it really annoyed the heck out of me. But Mac did a couple updates and the lag is gone and it's been smooth for me. So works great with Ableton. You know, you got the side scroll wheel for you know editing tracks and stuff so I also got the MX Master keyboard to go with it I'm sure you guys know about it you know wireless keyboard it's really slim feels uh, like really good quality I'm, I like it next up I want to talk about the Ableton Push 2 um, I got this before I got both of my MPCs, because I've just been a long time Ableton user, and this really gives you that hands-on experience with your DAW. I mean, all the controls are on there. Uh, it really just feels like an instrument. Uh, I really like it. I have to be honest, since I got the MPCs, I haven't been using it as much, but it's still, uh, it's still a really important part of my studio. And uh, I would recommend it. So for studio monitors, I'm using these JBL. Uh, what are these called? JBL uh, 3 Series Mark II. Uh, before these, I was using the, uh, the Yamaha 8-inch studio monitors, but Living in apartments, those 8-inch studio monitors were just way too loud. I mean, they sounded great, but they are way too loud. These are a little bit smaller. They're still loud as heck. I mean, they're still too loud for, for an apartment, but I like them. I like the look of them. They sound good. As far as studio monitors go, they're not that expensive. In my opinion, these studio monitors are the best bang for your buck. So I would recommend these any size. I think they have three, five, and maybe seven or eight. This is my main acoustic guitar. I've had this for over, you know, six, seven years now. Uh, it's just an Epiphone entry model acoustic guitar, but it sounds great. And uh, I'll, I'll keep it forever. I'll pass it on to my son. Um, I don't really use it on any beats that I make. It's it's more something that I play when I'm just relaxing. It's, you know, it's therapeutic. This is my other small, uh, little. It's it's actually a, a World War II era Japanese parlor guitar. Uh, I just really like like the tiger stripe pattern on the body, and um, it sounds pretty cool. But the action's really high, so I don't play it that often. Over here on this wall, it's just a little rack. I think I stole it from the kitchen. It was used for our, you know, spatulas and spoons and stuff, but I thought it'd be great to organize different cables that I use all the time. And it works out good. It's better than a, a pile of cables and, you know, they get all tangled and stuff, so this keeps them neat. 
All right, next up, this is my main keyboard. This is the Archeria Keylab 88. Uh, it's a really great playing keyboard. I have it on a, let's see, I have it on a rolling keyboard stand, so I kind of just slide it underneath my desk when I don't use it. And when I do use it, I kind of pull it out like this, and it works great. And lastly, I'd like to talk about uh, my other record player. This is called a Reloop Spin Portable Turntable. Really cool. Uh, now, you actually can scratch on this. Um, I have a couple of records here. They just have different phrases and uh, beats on them for scratching. That's a cool one. The actual... The actual record has a boxing ring on it. It's kind of a cool clear color. And the other one, it's got like some cool boxing gloves on it. And uh, a fist on each side. It's a really cool record. So, the reason why I got this record player is, well, one, to scratch on, and two, it's battery powered. It's, it's totally portable. It's on right now. It's got a speaker right here. Uh, it's got Bluetooth and all the outputs you need. And so, I take this along with the MPC Live 2. I mean, if I have a portable MPC, why not have a portable record player to sample from? It's the perfect setup. And down here, I just have a little record collection. I don't keep too many records around because I'm I am in an apartment, so I really just don't have the room to have shelves and shelves of records. So what I do is this is just a rotating collection, so. I sample, and uh, and if I've sampled the record and there's nothing else, I'm kind of tired of it. And I'll get rid of that record and I'll pick up some new ones, and you know I'll just keep doing that. So uh, yeah, this is the this is where the treasure is.